Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Insomniac Server Championship, second edition. My name is Noxious, and I'm with Lothar and Raven on the couch. I thought there was going to be a little bit of the advertisement sponsor, <laughs> but it wasn't the case, so I was uh, laughing a little bit. That being said, we've got another match coming right up. We've got Kamlin versus uh, Prokovac. Pokrovac. 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 I'm not sure. Pokrovac. Pokrovac, yeah. So uh, I know he played in the EU Winter Championships and did pretty well uh, over there, so... It's a name you wouldn't recognize. Kamlin either, I think, is an, that's also a name that people will not necessarily uh, recognize right off the bat. But he's been proven himself. I was actually casting with Kamlin on um, the Dreamhack Leipzig tournament. Yep. So, yeah. we didn't cast a lot, maybe two matches if I remember correctly. Um, but he's definitely a good player, I would say. I don't know him ex well exactly. You know? Yeah, I, can't I think... can't really say like, in, in the big picture what are, what are his best decks, what is his overall strategy, what he likes the most, and what are his like strong points and weak points. Maybe we'll get to know him better now in this series. Yeah, and I was speaking to him just before this match, actually. We were watching the previous set together, and um, he actually, from what, what I understand, likes taking a deck playing it and then just tinkering with it and putting his own spin on it as well so we might see a, well we've seen a lot of that come out in maybe his warlock deck specifically which right like i think that the one weird sort uh, of combo -y ish burst zoo deck I would whatever say we're calling hyper, it hyper aggressive deck with the druid drakes to cycle late game with yeah. some dark bomb soul fires uh, to kind of finish up the game so that being said we'll be moving on to uh some interviews about the players so they can tell us a little bit more about themselves so enjoy that my name is kemlan and i play for flow esports I think the level of competition in this tournament is very high, very high. Um, I'm used to play like uh, online tournaments, but here are so many big names. I think I have kind of good chances because I feel like my lineup is very strong. I managed to draw good as Druid <laughs> and Patron did well. So like the lineup, I'm pretty confident in the lineup. It feels really good to be a top eight because I'm not used to uh, competing on stage. I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, the first day wasn't so difficult, uh, I had a really good lineup, but today it was really hard, I played against really strong players and I did it, yeah, so I'm super happy. I really enjoy it because I'm here with friends and we are just chilling, talking, yeah, it's a pretty good event. I'm not that confident because there are a lot of good players like Life Code, Zalia, um, we will see. Yeah, so he brings up life coach and Zale, but uh, these two guys are out. Yeah, they're out. No problem uh, for him to win this, perhaps. I mean, I feel like I, I was talking to Kalman right before the game, and he was saying this is pretty much the second event that I play live, and I do feel the stress when I'm on stage. So, oh, does he? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. He comes across quite calm, to be honest. And he has played a fair few tournaments before, and he uh, won one of the qualifiers of the WCA uh, Europe as well. So, I don't know. I think he's played really solid so far. I don't think he has anything to really stress out about or worry about, uh, as long as he doesn't trip himself up in terms of, like, overthinking everything. And, and yeah, and, uh, it's good to see Pekovac as well. I saw him uh, last week right. playing in the EU Championships. And a uh, really young player, but been playing card games pretty much all his life. Uh, and so he's just got a lot of experience in the sort of tournament setting. He's played in a, a lot of like big card game tournaments uh, in the past. So looking looking for good things coming out of both these players actually. Yeah, they've got a really the, tough game. an identical lineup as far as the classes go. The decks are quite different, uh, from what I recall. The I think Kalman playing Patron was a bit of a he, he didn't think the deck was played perfectly when he played it. Um, but his Zulist I think is one that will take Pokrovac off guard. Yeah, it's really difficult as well, because I, I have no doubts that Pekovac will actually know what this list is, because he would have seen it already, you know, he's uh, no doubt he's watching the stream between games. But also, it's still difficult because you've not had the experience of playing against the list that often, in terms of navigating how you actually respond to it, and what it's uh, truly capable of, whether he knows it card for card or not. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we see that, that all of those players are bringing droid though. Yeah, so, no exception there, I guess. Druid Warrior and Warlock for Kamlan and Warrior Druid and Warlock for Pokrovac. So, the exact same classes, but with, you know, as you said, Kamlan is, is, is um, bringing that more bursty mid-range Warlock uh, that is capable of finishing games pretty quickly, yeah. I would say. Um, and the first the first matchup that we'll see will be between Patron Warrior and Druid. Right, that is a matchup, I think, uh, that is largely recognized as favored for the patron if they get a really good turn 
uh, starting on the patron turns and turn five. Yeah, exactly. And even just having a, a death bite, which I think is really important here, if you can draw into death bite by turn four and just have it equipped, you can deal with so much of the uh, you know, frustrating druid minions early on, whether it be a uh, shredder or a. Uh, no, even a Druid of the Claw as well, with additional effects to just finish it off there. But two Frothing Berserkers. That's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah, Frothing Berserk is definitely a card where a lot of the time, if you have it, you just play it on three versus Druid. Yeah. yeah. A really awkward health to deal with. Uh, it's not it's not wrappable. It requires uh, an extra point of damage to clear it off. And if you wrap it and don't clear it off, it's going to do even more damage from the bow. Definitely. So two having two of those on the board is something that Cannon will actually what to go for turn two Frothing Berserker to turn three Frothing Berserker just to you know threaten pile on the pressure. Kind of pressure. pressure force the spells force the removal yeah. and also it's gonna work as we can see Prokrovax opening hand just double savage draw Ancient of War Force of Nature he did draw into the Druid of the Claw which is gonna be good in a few turns time but he has no ramp no early removal and just nothing to do except hero power yeah, it looks like uh, if no Innervate is picked up next turn, he blanks again. Either needs a 3-drop mounted Raptor Shade. I'm not sure if he plays a Raptor, but right now it's not looking good, especially, I want to say, because Kamon has minions to put on the board. He doesn't have a, you know, a wide array of reactive cards. Instead, this time around, it's a lot more proactive. Yep, and we saw this uh, from the from Prokrovac in the EU Winter Championships where he just takes his time. He's very, very similar to Life Coach in which he's happy to just spend the time he has just you know, thinking about how he wants to you know, play the next few turns or what could potentially happen and just really use the full extent of his turn, yeah, no matter what. Yeah, so here Camlin has the option, of course, of playing the coin frothing, uh, but it's got to be a bit tempting to get, you know, the ghoul now frothing next turn, followed by a coin patron in a rage. Uh, however, to get on the board earlier than the druid is a really big deal. So if you're able to do that through simply coining out frothing, uh, it should be something that he wants to do. Isn't it just better to play the for, for the, uh, sorry the goal this turn? Right, that's what I was saying. There's a really good point where you get sorry, that I, point I, play. I don't know why I, I thought you were playing. Uh, you're saying about the berserker now. Before the patron draw, right? Right. It was really awesome to play the berserker, but now yeah, you're correct. The goal might be the best play to um, play into the patron as soon as possible. Yeah, there's like two crazy lines of play. One of which gets the patrons out very quickly. Yeah, and another draw from Prokrovac that's not going to do a lot this turn. The Keeper of the Grove going to be okay later on, either mainly removing a patron that's on two health, or uh, actually silencing one of the 3-3 three, three patrons. That's normally what you use it for later on versus Warrior, but it's going to be rough. He still just has Savage Draw like, if he wants to, but that actually accomplishes nothing unless he thinks it's worthwhile to set up a Hero Power or use the Keeper of the Grove next turn, because you know there's going to be no patron. I would say it's very important to deal the one damage to the goal right now. You have to do something on turn four, and yeah. you can't count on top decking a shade or a, or a pilot shredder. So you have to play um, the keeper of the group that you have in your hand. So if you want to do that, you probably will have to kill or silence the um, unstable goal. And if there will be no acolyte of pain from Kamlan or a frozen berserker, probably it's better to just kill it. Right, of course. If there will be an Archolite of Pain or Frozen Berserker from Camelon, then you, pro you would just silence it. So you definitely want to set up both scenarios, so attacking into the goal uh, will be the correct choice. Yeah, Pokrovac also runs into the problem where uh, if he wants to play the Keeper of the Grove, he's afraid of running into a Death Bite following the, you know, on the following turn. Yeah, I think one of the things here is like he didn't, didn't go for the attack there. He probably will still have to keep it the Grove, this ghoul, because especially now, like something needs to happen, but he was pretty much just dodging the, the Battle Rage as well. So if he attacked in, it would have been an easy two card draw from, uh, from the Battle Rage from Camelon. But he did just decide to play Ghoul, uh, to play the Frothing Berserker, sorry. And uh, again, like, Pokrovac's just got an awkward turn. He can play the Keeper of the Grove, but science off the Ghoul, so there's uh, going to be no, say, coin patron shenanigans. But it's going to be really tough as this Frothing Berserker is going to get sorry. some work done. Uh, well, I was thinking, now that you have the Beckham Hunter, maybe you can actually Beckham Hunter the Frothing Berserker in the upcoming turns. That's true. If yeah. you really want to have some tempo swings on the board, otherwise you're falling behind every single turn. Yeah, what would scare me now is if uh, Camlin goes for the play of actually playing Frothing Berserker into Coin War Axe, using the War Axe in the 1-3 to, uh, to clear oh, the Keeper awesome. of the Grove, yeah, and then you I, just that's so very... much threatening damage on the board, and the Druid clearly has a terrible hand because they've done nothing mm -hmm. for Forte. Well, you say he's got a terrible hand, but I think at this point, Kamlan is like, what shenanigan with Innervates am I running into in, like, one turn? 
Um, well, if he there's one turn, if it would just take into account it's five mana, innovate, so there's only three options. That's pretty much it, yeah, exactly. So his hand is either terrible or he's going to do something really broken. Yeah, and one of the things but is, most though, of the time, bad. Can, can he do something that broken when there's two pretty big frothing berserkers on the board? Engine yeah. of Law instantly doesn't do anything, right? right. Yes. It just sacrifices for exactly. one different berserker. Dr. Boom is the most yeah. like interesting option for, for Krovak, but they yes. boost the frothing berserkers so much. Yeah, if there's a whirlwind or something. Yeah, like. then you might just die, yeah. you know? And uh, that's basically it. Like, if it's, yeah. if it's yeah. an Engine of War, there's, it's still being dealt with really easily. And then even realistically, as we can see, there's a Druid of the Claw. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's the Innovate, though. But even then, like you said, it can just be dealt with. And also, with Cruel Taskmaster and in a Rage, if he wants to, he doesn't have to use just fr both Frothing Berserkers and into it. if there's an Execute, you just play the Ancient yeah, of War into an Execute yeah. and just like, okay, uh, I guess I lost this game. So, so he needs to be proactive. I mean, getting that Frothing up to 7 is pretty much uh, a no-go. I would say that this turn, you probably have to play the Druid of the Core and just kill up one of the Frothings. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, and just deal with it, yeah. Kalman is expecting to get swiped, but there is no such thing. You can rest easy. Yeah, I, I completely agree uh, with you, Lothar, because the problem is, if you go all in on the Ancient of War with the Innovate, and then execute <laughs> you're, Yeah, you're, you're dead. You're so dead. I mean, you're not instantly dead that turn, but you may as well be, right? Because there's not a lot of follow-up. Because one of the issues as well is, um, Force of Nature this turn doesn't even clear up both Frothing mm -hmm. Berserkers, so that could have been an option if he could have killed them yeah. both. Another thing is that that Innovate might be very clutch to play a, seven, a turn 7 combo if you survive yeah. that far, right? So you can use it to clear up the patrons, to clear up um, other minions that will be played and just on board, so very important. Okay, um, there's a, I think a pretty okay option here of actually just going Patron in a Rage. What about Acolyte of Pain Taskmaster? I don't know. When you've got the patron in a rage and the frothing, you're forcing the druid to split himself in ha like in exactly, yeah, pieces to it, go with If he game. answers the frothing with either a BGH, a keep of the growth silence, or a swipe, well, he can't really swipe with two uh, two patrons on the board. Well, that's uh, that's and then if he BGHs, he has what like three mana left. Like, how does he right. deal with two patrons with three uh, mana? That's a very good point. Yeah. And and also worst case, you have your second patron already in hand. So if you get into those whirlwinds mm -hmm. later, you can mm -hmm. still just reload on the patrons. Okay, so Patron in the Rage, deal 8 damage to the face with the Frothing Berserker, 9 damage with the Ghoul, and you keep the weapon. Yeah, and the weapon's super flexible, so I really like just putting a Patron on the board, mainly because he has the second one. Mm -hmm. right. If, if he only had one, maybe you just hold on to it and go for the, the Acolyte play, because it's just safer, but I think with two he could have risked this. Well, it feels like Lothar, which is... No, 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 I'm that was my initial thought, but I agree that the patron turn is most likely better. Okay, well, either way, he picked the card draw, which is obviously playing into the long game. Uh, he thinks maybe there's a lot of removal in Pokrovac's hand, just because of the fact that the, the gameplay so far has been very slow from the Druid, so he's thinking maybe double Wrath, another random keeper. Something about this hand is very wrong, uh, and I can't quite figure out what it is. Yeah, because now, uh, Force, if he did play the Patron, he could have actually cleared everything off with Force of Nature and the Wrath that he's just drawn. Right. Um, so but that would require Innovate, so you can't really play around. Oh, I'm not right? saying he should have played, yeah, I'm just saying if that would have happened, uh, mm -hmm. it did turn out that Pekrovac did have an answer, but it's not something you actually do play around, and he can still do something similar. He could Force of Nature oh God, uh, still, but he is going to go for the big game. Hunter. This puts a minion on the board, as opposed to losing them all after Force of Nature happens, and he does have Innovate and the two Savage Draws as well. Yeah, I think Kelman at this point is looking for an AoE effect, whatever that AoE effect ends up being. Uh, I think he just wants to find one. That was Dev Spite. Just that, a bad setup as a patron for next turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't dislike just Battle Rage for two cards, play Dev Spite, and attack the. Yeah, I would say though. VGH. But you want to replace the weapon before you attack, so you set up the, the Dev Spite effect for the next turn. Right, so yeah. you attack with the Dev Spite. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a textbook patron flood that's hard to answer by the Druid player. However, there's still no Execute. It's likely to be drawn. Do you right? think you actually save off on the Battle Rage this turn? Because you can almost guarantee a decent Battle Rage next turn with the Inner Rage and the Whirlwind effect from the Death Spike? I like that. It's definitely a consideration. But if you're digging for... Because uh, if you use two mana now, then you can use the Whirlwinds you might pick up afterwards. That's so it's really all about whether or not you need to play the cards that you end up drawing. Ooh, it's like an Inner Rage and a Slam. It's too. also about the Execute, to fit it exactly. in the right? Yeah. Well, looks like uh, 
He's gonna he's gonna try to keep his health up, thinking I feel like I'm about to just win the game if I attack face for four. Uh, it's not completely wrong actually. Yeah, and it's for Krovax there, fully aware that this is gonna either be a patron or a Grom this turn, because there was no reason to equip the death bite if you're not gonna cash in on the you know you don't if you don't use the whirlwind to some effect next turn. Yeah, I'm just thinking still about the trade. You're at 27, you'll be at 23, you die. You don't even die to double combo. You die to double inner raid double combo if everything goes wrong, but it's really impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Takes like three yes. turns to set up. And the problem here is like, does he just have to play Ancient of War? Because he has to play around either Grom, and then like, it's best to play around Patron, it's still the Ancient of War, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What did you think about you uproot it and you force them to take five, to take ten and then maybe <laughs> and maybe then, you and pull then off you the double combo? <laughs> well, it's on turn eight, right? Oh, sorry, yeah, he's one one man off. He'd be okay yeah. for a little bit, um, but yeah, it's just the execute possibility is way yeah. too daunting to justify doing this. But again, you know, zero cost minion to benefit from a potential battle rage if you had another one. I like this last first uh, just to see the options and execute. Oh, that's a bit. <laughs> Come on, smiling a little bit. Like, oh, I, I didn't <laughs> just do this, did I? Oh, I did. Uh, but it, then he can't play the patrons, right? Right, right. I mean, the acolytes still. I um, would a good say setup. go for it. Execute this minion, deal one damage to the face, de play a, a free, free. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, Pokrovak is shaking his head, and Kamlan empathizing also does. This is like the. The brotherhood of I'm sorry. <laughs> just consistent I'm sorry either way. And a Shredder's definitely not going to help. I and mean, we can see Pokrovite's just shaking his head. And then, um, yes, this is going to be rough. He can innovate out a combo and clear the board if he wants to, but there's still four damage from the weapon that he can't really avoid. And uh, he still knows that because the weapon was equipped earlier, there's something going to come out in the form of Patron or setting up for that Grom next turn. Mm -hmm. Well, the double inner rage is going to be more than enough to seal this. That's three, five, seven, yeah, eight, eight nine. Yeah, it's enough. You don't need patrons even to win against this droid. I think you play the patron anyway. Just, just, just for the. Like, I had a really I, good I, hand. Yeah, <laughs> I could have done this earlier, but still. Yeah. And there's the concede as Camlin does take the first game with his patron warrior. And from what we've been, what we've seen on stream from Camlin, actually, he's performing really well with his patron. Very, uh, I think he's one of those guys who actually played a million patron games, probably pre-nerf, yeah. and just one of the guys who really loved one of those decks and then just continued to yeah. play afterwards. He told me he liked his lineup, but didn't feel uh, like his patron play was as good as he wanted it to be. But I, he plays well. From what we've seen, yeah. there weren't too many mistakes. Uh, if any at all, in fact. In this game, there weren't many, but there weren't also many opportunities to make so many of them, yeah. given the Druid hand. And I want to point out that the Druid being gone is a really big deal in this format. It is. Druid is the most consistent class when it comes to the results that we had during the three days of the tournament. And having that gone also makes the matchups in general better for your, an example, Warlock, uh, which is not pure zoo, right? Um, or did Mineral Magic is something you don't really want to play. Yeah. Right? But we are going to see a mirror match now, though, as uh, Prokovac locks in his warrior for the uh, for the old mirror, and it's going to be put, uh, patrons on both sides, I believe. Uh, yeah, it is. So uh, this is going to be a rough one. You, it is the rule here, pretty much whoever makes patrons first wins? Should be. Yeah, and in, in theory, that is usually the way it goes. Um, but I feel like a lot of the time, when both players get a really awkward beginning, whoever gets that Shredder out first, uh, can sometimes force the opponent to be on the back foot for a few turns and then from there just snowball from tempo. Yeah, this is actually kind of what, what, one of the fun ways this matchup can go in the mirror is that neither player has patrons but has a lot of other options. Right. So we see the Shredders, the Frothing Berserkers, the Acolyte uh, execute on one side, Whirlwind on another. You know, like it's going to be really interesting how each player chooses to navigate this matchup when the, the very straightforward patrons turn five and I win isn't, you know, doesn't uh, appear. Yeah, and one of the things as well is that you spend the entire game setting up for that patron turn, right? Like, you haven't drawn it yet, but there's enough card draw in your deck yeah. that you can probably assume you'll find it. Well, the shutters are a good thing here. Especially important just to trigger the attacks from the depth spell before your opponent plays the patrons. Because you can't really leave the, um, the Palta shutters on board. It's too much damage stacking yeah. up, right? Yeah, although from Camlin, I would really like to see the death spite this turn. 
Um, because what this does is it still threatens like the patron turn next turn for Cameron. So there's still a potential setup. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't have patrons, but he might want to flag to Pokrovec that I have this equipped and it's my turn five first. So it might alter Pokrovec's actual play and make it a little bit worse. But he is just going to go for the Shredder instead. But is there a way for Pokrovec to actually play around it? I don't think there is. He might. He, he would have to play for the draw and. My yeah. guess is that they don't even play the ball in their deck. Yeah, I guess the only way you would be able to play around it is if you keep this Dead Spite equipped, let the Shredder live, right? I uh, like the... You would wait for the Patron, that is, and then you execute the one that's damaged yeah. and maybe get a slam on another one and something uh, happens from there. <laughs> Look at that. Surprisingly, this would have been good. But you still get a decent turn, you know, you do get to play the Dead Spite again. Uh, the Light Well is going to prevent a Battle Rage at some point. Yeah, that's kind of hilarious <laughs> when I think about it. They might also heal a patron that is almost dead. Yeah, I was going to say, light well for patrons. <laughs> the dream! So pretty reasonable. Uh, can, so with a whirlwind in hand as well, which I think is the import, one, of, one of the three important ca cards in this hand, it almost forces Camelon to just play the, the weapon no matter what, because he wants to lock it in. Next turn he goes, patron, attack, whirlwind off the death bite, and then whirlwind from whirlwind and, uh, to generate even more patrons, because he doesn't have that typical inner rage for, to, for that turn point. I'm surprised that um, Camelon didn't play his pirate. I guess if there's a weapon on Pokrovac's size, you don't want to waste it away. Uh, and you want to wait maybe for that Battle Rage potential. Hmm. I mean, does it accomplish much here besides maybe killing an Armor Smith, assuming you dodge weapons and slams and whirlwinds? It's, it's tricky. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think a lot of the time you do hold off because because he has the Shredder as well, there might be some situation where he doesn't actually go for Patron that specific turn and wants to play like Shredder attack battle rate, uh, Shredder and the uh, course end next turn. Yeah, a big tempo swing. You want to play it as a zero cost 3-3 three, three simply because you're going to get tempo on an opponent patron warrior, which does not run as much removal, of course, as a control warrior. So it gives you a little bit of an edge when it comes to trading the turn afterwards, uh, if you see them trying to set up patrons. It's interesting that um, Kovac didn't choose his Warlock to play this matchup. Yeah, maybe he feels more confident in his ability to play the Patron. The Patron first? Yeah. And that was, a, that was an interesting attack as oh, well. Oh, wow. So okay. He, he chose to attack him with the Armorsmith on the Lightwell, but that um, would have opened up still one extra battle, uh, you know, battle rage potential. Yeah. So if he okay. just attacked face or whatever, or didn't attack, then the Lightwell heals the, the warrior, and then they're both on full health, so there's less chance of a battle rage. Agree. Or it would force him to trade into a minion to proc the self warrior battle rage. So that was an interesting attack there, but Camelon getting onto that inner rage seems feels pretty reasonable here about uh, making the patrons. He's probably going to go straight into this froth in. Yeah, I like this. There's still two um, executes for, for Pokrovac. Good for him, in fact, because this would be very tough to handle otherwise. You don't need to play the whirlwind, so. Hmm. Well, Does this well, well. Help? It might clean up the. Not quite. I mean. Yeah, it doesn't help. Yeah. yeah cause That's a problem. Because you can't get through the taunt, right? To make yeah. it work. Yeah. So keeping on that pirate was crucial. Very well played by Kamlan. Not playing it the turn before, because now he needed to um, play around the one attack from the weapon. As you can see, there has to be an execute played on the minion. So. Something will survive. Yeah, and that doesn't look good for for Pokrovac. Because a, a, basically a five mana patron is still on board. Yeah, I mean, I think he did fairly well. That's a pretty pretty decent response to Pokrovac. Oh, oh my god. But now, I mean. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and he came on, he's like, I'm shaking my head because I didn't choose to be like this. <laughs> You, you oh. know it's bad when the player who gets the <laughs> who gets the draw is like, oh my god, really? And like, literally, just like, I, I'm sorry about this, but I need, not I need to win. win. Yeah, yeah. It's so slam the Frothing Berserker first, see your draw, because you want to sacrifice the patron, one of the patrons, into the Frothing Berserker, right? So yeah. you slam, you see what? Maybe you, you slam your own patron, because that way you can sacrifice it, kill the Frothing after you yeah, will. Get the whirlwind, That's better, actually, right? Yeah. You get an extra patron. You're but you don't get the... Oh, you get the... Yeah, you're going to trade yeah, the patron in anyway, right? Because of Whirlwind, it does the same. He gets the second patron. <laughs> Unbelievable! No way, this is just unreal. 
Um. I saw Poker Rat lean over there. I was like, is he just leaving? Is he just had enough? He just leans away from the chair for a second, but he's definitely going to be rough as he sees the inner rage. There we go. Into Whirlwind and then Shredder. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> still reeling from the other Shredder as the light well still on the ball. Yep. I mean, this is one of the things I dislike about this matchup, and I would do everything not to play a mirror match. Yeah. Because it's a really, uh, uh, it's really when someone plays the patron first. Yeah, th there's, a, there's a lot of skill involved in the deck overall, but in the mirror matchup, you can just lose to someone who, who uh, dropped patrons before you, and you can't really do much to control that. Uh, it's a shame because P Pekrobak had a good answer, I feel, to the first wave. It was four patrons, and he ended up only leaving one 3-3 three, three up with a minion on his side of the board that would trade well with it. But, you know, when your opponent then just rips straight into a, in a rage uh, and then the whirlwind, yeah. just, uh, there's not much you can actually do at this point. I have to wonder though, like, is there a world in which equipping Death's Bite over Fiery War Axe earlier for Pokrovac was an option and it would help clean up the patron board? Because if you end up, you know, duplicating the 3-2, uh, like on a near full board, you kill the 5-1, 3-2 duplicates, you have the War Axe left, and your own patrons. Yeah, he might try for that. I kind of like. Right? I kind of like this. Yeah, this yeah. is pretty much. Uh... He's gonna try to. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's not happening. Oh, uh -huh. I lied. That light well has a lot to answer for. Yeah. <laughs> it's going straight to hell. There's no chance it stays. I no, mean, no more executes. Right. Able for Krovac. Revenge. There's a chance like this patron list somehow. But revenge would so require Pokrovac being down to 12 HP, which is. Probably gonna happen. Three, six, nine. Yeah, he will be down. It will be down. Well, this is kind of risky from Camelot like then. Yeah, did he need to play that patron? I was thinking about it. Is, is it needed? But there's no revenge to punish his decision. Uh, has, has Pekrovac already used the, uh, his other whirlwind? No, I don't I'm think so. Because there's it. always a player against patrons where you can fill the board. And because the board is full, you can do repeat AOE, that all it does is just damage the minion, right. not summon anymore. And I don't know if, with, with a Shredder and the Light Well on, I don't know if you needed to play that other, um, the other Patron. Patron. Yeah, right. it probably wasn't needed, especially that your opponent can attack into the Palted Shredder and get a Doomsayer out of it. Yeah. And then you basically lose the matchup. It's just weird, because like, what I'm just trying to think what card actually deals with two three three patrons when he only has second charge death and he point. used two executes yeah and but the problem is there's, there's two full health patrons like the second he attacks one of those patrons is duplicating itself so why do you need, why do you need the third three three patron that's all i was thinking and the hail mary comes out from pokrovac he hopes for the best but unfortunately it's actually terrible that it dies because <laughs> it, it makes the second whirlwind harder yeah there we go and there's the uh there's the concede. That was a very rough game for Prokrovac. He did what he could, but again, just most pr pretty solid play from Cameron, and he got the patrons on the board and then could keep them going afterwards. So he's now 2-0 up. Right. This is a textbook snowball, right? Like, you get yeah. the uh, impossible comeback. I mean, this is this is how the matchup probably almost every time looks like. Right. At some point, it becomes like this. Yeah. Uh, there was One a of point the plays where he on the back foot, so his depth right. spite is kind of useless. So he can't attack into his minions or even the, into his opponent's face unless he wins with a Gromash attack. So it's kind of pointless to do anything with your hand. Yeah, well, that was the issue for Krovac as well. He didn't put enough pressure on early that Grom was even a threat. I think uh, Cameron was on like 27 health at the end of that game, so there was not even close to him dying. But he is moving on to his Warlock, which is Zoo versus this Patron Warrior again from Cameron. And this is why I'm surprised now. He has a Zoo deck and he didn't opt to play it against the patron. I think it's not necessarily, I mean, it might be better than the coin flip of, you know, patron versus patron, but it's still a very difficult matchup if there's enough AoE. And if your list is not, you know, is especially vulnerable if you're playing big minions to stuff like Execute. Now this is playing Void Terrors. Yeah, the egg is gonna get eaten up. I mean, the Void Terrors are insane good against the uh, yeah, patron. pretty much. I'm surprised that Zoo didn't come out there. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, yep. Turn three will be insane. You spawn a four four for two mana, which can attack, of course. So it's like basically like a double summoning sickness. But you gain a three five for three mana. So the deal is there, and your opponent 
has to deal with those minions SAP and with what they ex with what executes that's really hard to do. Yeah, and that, you know I think a lot of, a lot of people get caught up a little bit in Void Terror imagining like POPO Void yeah, Terror into like needed. a massive minion and it's like, you know what, a three five for three and procking the egg is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna complain at that, because that's uh, now quite a threatening board on turn three, like you said, Lopa. Well, it's an interesting uh, spot for, for oh wow, okay. <laughs> it's an it, interesting it spot for Kalman. Oh, never mind. This is kind of playing itself. But the thing is, is it, there's, it, there's is still it? a lot of plays for him to do here yes. instead of the Death Spite. There's exactly. a lot more. Because if you coin out Death Spite, you kill the 4-4, four four, so you kind of patch up the bleeding, right? Right. Because your opponent won't stack up another 4, four, four damage attack. Uh, but at the same time, you delay the Patron by one turn. Because right. You can't um, attack with the Death Spite again on next turn. Yeah. So basically... Basically, it's better to play the pile that shredder this turn. You think? I think so. With the three and five the on the board, though? Yeah, it's yeah, fine. At least it's it tanks on damage, right? It, it does for AoE at any place. Dev rattle, and then you can play Dev Spider next turn into a patron. No, I like that a lot better because as I was, and even I'm looking at stuff like Acolyte. As boring as it is, you get what one draw. Uh, from it, plus the top deck. If you pick up an execute, suddenly that one damage matters. You keep the coin for a future play. The cool Taskmaster is still able to get in there uh, if the Acolyte's not dealt with. So there's a lot of plays you can make. And I think this one, as you highlight that you highlighted, yep. is the single most consistent one to win the late game. And he's got to put the attack into the Void Terror so that it, if it does or when it does trade into the Treaders, before the cards even drop, <laughs> wow. it's like, yep, oh. Oh. take it. What was that? They, they basically <laughs> talk to each other. He's like, if I play this, do you trade? Yeah, yeah. The gentleman's agreement, like... <laughs> and the dead spy will come after the spider. And this is also an important uh, important situation. When you see the dead spy, death rattle trigger will be after uh, the hunted creepers. It's very important. Yeah, that Doom Guard, however, will not discard that much. In fact, possibly nothing, depending on what comes out. And Gamelon's health is dipping absurdly low. This is usually how the, the zoo wins against the patron. They right. put threats. The weapons are not enough, and you find yourself in a really tough well, situation. I don't mind fraud and ghoul, because <laughs> uh, you, you can attack into uh, the spider, put everything on one health on the other side of the board. The ghoul will finish everything off, and you'll still be left with a massive frothing that uh, he'll have to trade into with the M Gang boss. I don't think you you can afford it. Afford yeah. to not attack with the death spider this time. Right. So yeah. that, that's kind so of you, the point. So you attack the M Gang boss, right? Yeah, you play a ghoul, frothing, you attack the M gang boss, and yep. leave it at that. Mm -hmm. You could play Acolyte, I guess. Uh, you could play Acolyte, but it trades... But do you want to play Acolyte when your opponent is low, running low on cards and you have access to minions that can be trading next turn? Hmm. That can trade, so that can right. trade next turn? I mean, a whirlwind here... And, and also, like, the, the ghoul at this point would, like, demand an insane answer from the zoo. Mm -hmm. Even on 14 health, the zoo's probably not going to burst with one card in hand. He oh, does no. get the Abusive Sergeant. Which but it doesn't have. really change anything. No, but at least he can play it. He doesn't discard after, a card. After yeah. one yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, yeah, yeah. He just plays it. It's just a 2-1 for, <laughs> for one. And it's just important that he doesn't like throw something important away. You know, like, if he threw Dr. Boom away, then that would make the turn horrible. So now the front of the Berserk will have been able to clear right. the Doom Guard and not... And without that Frothing Berserker, and without an Execute in hand, you, what you need to do is attack with the Acolyte that paint to the Doom Guard and, and pray for it. Well, no, you can trade into the 2-1 and use the Cruel Task to enable the Execute. I mean, that, you so you play Armor Smith first, then? Right, you play Armor Smith. Yeah, that's a good one. And, uh, I mean, there's so many lines of play that you could have taken last turn, right, with the Frothing and the Acolyte. Uh, wait, wait, like, picking a different Sorry for, for interrupting you. Sure. What about Whirlwind? If you draw Wilwin from the Acolyte of Pain, so you deal two damage to the Doom, Doom Guard instead of one. Instead of one, does that change anything? Um, if you had another, if you had the Dread Corsair, it might, but because you don't, uh, it's a tough decision. See what comes out from the Acolyte? Uh, it's a battle rage. Not, not a bad helpful. card to find, but. So, mm, yeah, you can't even Taskmaster his, uh, his Armor Smith and get two off now. It's Taskmaster and Armor Up. I don't see any other option. Yeah. I'm gonna go for that. Oh yeah, because he can't kill off the, he can't probably execute either. Yeah. Yep. You need the Taskmaster and... Wow, now he goes for the Frontline Berserker. So he's dead to a few top decks. Power of Whelming, Peddler, Soulfire. Oh, oh. oh Peddler P.O. Could happen. He might have it in his backpack. Nope. And... Wow. Like Murlocs. 
on the And now it's funny because um, Pokrovac needs to kill the Amosmith. Yeah. Or the Frozen Berserker. Which means he has to use the Doom Guard to kill a 1 4. Or the 2 4. Because if he doesn't kill the 2 4, then the Frozen Berserker trades into the Doom Guard. Or wins the game right away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As we've seen before. It well, it's happen. 25. It's probably yeah, not possible. He can still do it. He can still do it. It's been this done. This is Kamlin. George, whoa, I have nightmares about <laughs> what the frothing can do. Uh. And the Murloc actually got picked up. Yeah. Hilarious. Murloc's on the Murloc. What are the other picks? Uh, Secret Keeper and the Young Dragonheart. So the Young Dragonheart just straight up dies to a whirlwind effect. Yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. This works and with Shredder. Th there's actually a chance that a second peddler might give him another Murloc. Or Shredder drops one. <laughs> I'm being serious. Like, it's just yeah, I'm not saying card. it's wrong. I'm just saying <laughs> it's just hilarious. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying this is silly. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll agree with that, 100%. <laughs> well, he sacrificed the Ungard then. Wow. I thought going face was viable, but since you don't know if there's any whirlwind effects coming up, it's a tricky call to make. And it looks like Camlan, not exactly uh, sitting on too many ways to you know, Task take the board over. Yeah, I think Taskmaster onto the Berserker and then uh, Battle Rage feels like it's good. It's gonna you will early. draw two cards, you will spend four mana. Because he, he must be because he might not even need to charge the Berserker because he might draw an execute. Absolutely. Right? So like I think that you know he must be drawing towards these key cards like Whirlwind or something like that. Because otherwise, like it must be just sat at the bottom of the deck. But I think this gives his highest chance to get a really strong out here. And let's see it. It could even be something as boring as uh, an unstable. Uh, even. Uh, almost Smith. Smith. Okay. I'll take that. Almost Smith is awesome yeah. then. Why not? The frustration yeah, okay. now is he can armor Smith, but not armor up as well. Yeah, I was thinking the other play that could have been made was Taskmaster the 1-1 one, one, and weapon up, kill the 1-1 one, one, or kill the 2-2 two, two, and armor up. And you still kill the Doom Guard. I can get yeah. behind that. Like right now, he's still putting himself in a position where a PO will finish him off, right? Because at this point, three damage on board, four extra is easy to find. There's another Doom Guard lying in there, possibly. That's a little bit more, and oh, that'll be it. Yeah. Hmm. The Krovat probably really happy he gets a win on the board here and there. And again, with the, I mean, it's obviously easy to say now, but going back to what you said, Lothar, like, the Krovat probably thinking, Oh, I wish this was the previous game. Well, oh, and I've still got my patron warrior. <laughs> I think it certainly should have been picked into into the patron of the zoo because sometimes it's like if how do you win against the zoo if you don't have if you're if you're not drawing the weapons or you don't have the patron, you just lose the board control from them. You don't have access to a brawl. You will have to get multiple um, whirlwind effects, and even if that's the case, there's the imp gang boss, there are the eggs, there are the hunted creepers, which still are not that afraid of those uh, area of area of effect uh, cards yeah it's definitely an interesting pick to, to go patron into patron um especially just because it does just feel like it relies on one play a coin flip right yeah kind of. um but hey ho you know he still has his zoo and he's going to be facing off against camlin's warlock list so it's going to be warlock versus warlock but two very different style decks and that's a very interesting opening hand for pokrovac because he's on the coin I would say you can keep Void Caller and Morganis in the opening hand. I would say so too. Yeah, yeah I, I agree actually. He, he threw everything, everything, but he still has a great hand. However, I would have liked to see this, knowing full well that Camlan's list is, uh, you know, the type of list that is not going to be able to contest the board too well, unless he's using Dark Ball, Mental Fire, or multiple minions into Void Caller Morganis in a sequence. Still a great hand though for Pokovac. It is, especially with the Hunted Creeper against the um, against the Leper Gnome. Yeah, and this is going to make uh, Kellan's turn three so far looking a little bit clunky, to say the least. Yeah, and uh, even this uh, Juggler on turn two doesn't feel great when you know your opponent can play his own Juggler if he's got it, and then run into the, uh, run into the Juggler. Wow. And yeah, those lucky. Juggles, nope. oh. miss, and not bad. Ooh. Half hit, but you're hoping there's no great three drop that comes out oh oh my is this for real Ooh, this is awesome yeah it's great can you get a two drop or one elven drop. archer no <laughs> wow oh! wait that doesn't change that it. doesn't change much but then again you do get to clean it up right <laughs> well wait, think i think you tap wait. instead really? i think you just tap instead i don't know you need to get that shredder on the board but you have to make a trade then 
Oh, he does. Yeah, I think that's the correct choice because now in turn four you have the pilot shredder Which can't without the implosion, right? Because I think it's it's just important to have the pilot shredder just in turn four. Implosion is the comeback mechanism, especially if you pick up the second knife juggler. So it's very important to have. I think you're right. Yeah, looking back on it, especially since you know turn three is likely going to be him gang boss, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be able to contest it with Shredder. That's right. The second map juggle doesn't change anything here. Most, most likely not. Corruption, Relic, Fury Seeker, and Vulgan Infiltrator. None of those creatures are appealing, and the best one is, of course, Vulgan Infiltrator, which is. It's okay, interesting, I would say, in this matchup because it doesn't die to any AoE effects apart from the knife juggler, and already one was played. Yeah, I didn't dislike corruption if you ignore the shredder. Hmm. But it does take in a bit, uh, a bit too much value, perhaps. Yeah. Now, this is kind of the spot you can get in as Camlin with this deck, which has a lot of, uh, of situational cards. And this is so important to roll. And of course, it's two. Why not? I just want to say that this is just such a tricky situation that you maybe, maybe you should have think about tapping and going into a dark bomb yeah, instead. Yeah, just to guarantee it. Yeah. I really liked the tap dark bomb more than uh, an implosion. All right, let's see what uh, the future brings for Calman. I don't think this deck run hell like runs Hellfire, but it is the type of card that I I believe makes sense in a list like this one. Yeah, something that, um, again, I was asking Camelon about this list before this match. Mm -hmm. And he's, the reason he likes it so much is he feels he can pretty much just every turn play him, because it has a lot of like Zeus style minions in the game. You just play a minion tap, play a minion tap, play a minion tap, play a minion tap. And, that's, Continue until, and then you just burst someone down and there's not a lot they can do about it, like mid, mid to late game. That's what he should have done last yeah. time. Which tap is and why the play was surprising. Yeah. Yeah. That was a very... A risky play. A 33% chance to throw the win away, I would say. Well, yeah, 33% is actually, might not sound it, but it's pretty high. Yeah. For, for, to, to almost decide a game. He could still come back and win, of course. The game is not over, but it's definitely made it a lot harder for him. Yeah, like the Owl on the Yim Gang boss with Dark Ball and Juggler uh, and a tap, of course. You would tap first, but it's just every play you make in a spot like this one is likely going to lose you the next turn anyway yeah you just stay behind right, right? that's the problem there's nothing that e even like a lot of the time you can argue for these your drake because uh, it draws him an extra card maybe even as your drake it's soul fire or something to just try and do something i like that yeah. but there's so many minions on the board that you know the your drake's dead next turn and he's probably going to be killed by one minion because there's still chance for abusive sergeants and everything like that to trade up with he is going to go for it i think this is the best of a bad set loses the implosion oh and an implosion again. oh my god and let's see yeah i think at this point Makrovac is not going to get pushed off this board uh since there is no AoE oh, in Summon's Yeah, because if, if he rolled like, yeah, I think he sacrificed at least one, just because if you roll the high implosion, you just want to get as many minions as possible. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if uh, Camelon is playing any Hellfires or Shadow Flames, right? That's the thing that we're thinking I, about. Yeah, I don't think we've seen any. I wish we did. I think it, this deck would uh, benefit greatly in those weird aggro mirror situations where just a single reset followed by just burst to the face would probably win you a game. Like a turn five Hellfire Leopard Gnome. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. <laughs> because at the, at the moment, uh, this sort of variant on Warlock is still suffering from the issue Zoo has in general, is that once a board is, is overtaken, it can't reclaim it again. Yeah. Because um, there's no AoE and, and they normally have to battle with minions, but Camus just not being able to hold onto the board. So this looks very much like a Zoo mirror, even though the deck is slightly different. That means we're going to go into Druid versus Zoo, uh, which is known for, in the past, a Zoo dominance, of course, but the, of recent memory, I feel like the, the way the matchup has been played is a bit different. Yeah, it's definitely, I think it's still favor. I think the Zoo play is still going to feel a lot better. Pogrovac's probably been pretty happy about his matchup. Some arrogance being shown right now. Obviously. Yeah, like a smile, yeah, finally the RNG goes my way. It had to happen at some point, <laughs> yeah. right? Now it's fair. <laughs> we just go into the last game. Yeah, it's Get like some good rolls one side, some good <laughs> rolls the other side. Yeah. Finish the game now. I don't know. I, I feel like that implosion deciding the game for Camlan might have deserved a little bit more consideration. Yeah, for pulling the trigger. Well, he had a dart bomb. 
you know, he had when, when you can guarantee a play versus risking a play, it's slightly better, but would be terrible. If it backfired? Uh, yeah, then um, it would be, uh, it's definitely something to consider. Like the, He just had a very easy play in terms of the dart bomb tap, but he did go for the uh, the riskier, but that the higher rewarding play in the long run, but it didn't really pan out for him so far. But Camlin now is going to go to his Druid, double Ancient of Wars that we can see. Pretty confident, yeah, they're going to get mulliganed away for something maybe a little bit early. And he does get Wild Growth, oh. Innovate, Swipe, and Ancient of Law with obviously the coin. As he he has second. some insanely valuable cards in his hand right now against Azul. Yeah. He needs to play them very cautiously. And I was going to say, Pokrovac's hand was insane if he were on the coin. This is something you blow out a druid with very easily. But given that he didn't have a one drop and he's going to have to slow down the pace, <laughs> Wild Growths uh, will give Kalman the ability to play his big ancients, draw cards, put Innovate up a defense. another Wild Growth? And you have Does a it give you a great growth? coin play? Not really, but you gain basically Innervate each turn. That's correct. By playing this. You know, I have to wonder it, it, if Pokrovac is aware that there's a Nation of War in that list. Because if there is, then the Corruption was a pretty decent pickup. Yeah. I think one of the problems with the Corruption is that uh, with Zoo, can they afford to just like pass a turn? You know, because if you corrupt an Ancient of War, you're not going to attack the minions, right? Because you presume that's the only taunt on the board. Mm -hmm. It's like, can you afford to just pass a turn, let Druid do what it wants to do, and then the turn after the Ancient of War dies? Yeah. Do you like playing that Innervate coin ancient? Well, if he didn't use the Innervate less than for the second Wild Grove, he has to play a 7, a seven right yeah. now. Yeah. I don't see another choice. And now he have to decide does he want to play Ancient of Law or Ancient of War. And that's the only thing that he can play. Oh. I, I kind of like War here. Personally. Wow, he's going for the Wild Grove. He's setting up a swipe probably at this point. The Zombie Child gives him a lot of, uh, I guess, Safety. Yeah, a lot safety of wiggle net. room isn't there in terms right. of uh, his health. He can be uh, maybe take it a little bit slower, take some more earlier damage with the chow, and that's uh, another snap play of a uh, void caller. And I don't blame him. To, to, to draw it into a four drop on turn four, you normally do drop that guy, um, especially because even though he has like the probably the lowest value uh, demon, well, wow. it's still going to get some value if it pulls the flame imp and it dies this turn. That's a cool play. That's a great top deck, I'd say. The, the draw that he just picked up gives him a great uh, innervate turn if he wants to play for removal, uh, while also getting the ability to curve into those Ancients on the following turn while keeping the coin. Yeah, I think that's okay. Would you just uh, like silence and then leave the Chow up to trade into the uh, Keep of the Grove? Probably, yeah. It does leave three damage on board. You have a 2-4, so the Warlock will have to commit a bit more to this uh, Keep of the Grove than maybe they want to. Yeah, I like the keeper into the into the swipe. It can be done on turn eight anyway, like on turn uh, turn eight na naturally after you curve with the Ancient of Lore. There's also a chance that you heal up the Ancient of War. But, but you, you leave the Ancient of War on on mercy of POs and right value trades and abusive surgeons. There was already eight damage. Yeah, on the board there. It's, it's, really it's just risky. straight away like like you said one one power overwhelming. Excuse now he can peel the Void Caller, get the fl free Flame Imp, and run the 2-1 in. But imagine if that would be a Morganis right now. Or, let's say, yeah. Doomguard. Even an Imp Gloss is horrible for... for, for the Flame Imp. No, no, I mean, if he had it. Oh, if he had the... Cross. Oh, sorry, yeah, 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 of course, 100%. Like, uh, pretty much anything was horrible from that Void Caller. I think what he wanted to do was pop the Spider, and now he gets an even better turn, luckily enough, with the Living Roots still functioning as a filler for that Innervate play. So you want to pop the egg and swipe the the spider with the swipe? That's not really a No, I'm not you sure. No, the egg. You pop the spider with Living Roots, then you swipe... I don't know, because you can always just keep her the Grove. Well, you can keep her the Grove, the, the Juggler, then you pop yeah. the spider and then you swipe the Chow, or the, the Imp, pick one. You don't want to pop the yeah, egg you would, if you, you, spot the, you don't pop the swipe spider, the right? Yeah, you spider. do not want to pop the egg. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, the problem is if you if you pop the egg, you have too many high health targets to get a good swipe off, even with a Keeper of the Grove and Living Roots, I think. Yeah, I feel like the spider, like the juggler needs to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's kind of step one of this entire sequencing. However you end up doing it. Because um, if you go for Living Roots to kill the juggler and still pull off a swipe, it's really interesting that he's gone for actually Sance in the egg there. But you can wait. Uh, you don't have to swipe now if you don't think you have to. You can attack into the Haunted Creeper as well to set up a Innervate Swipe 4 drop if you will draw one. Right. 
Well, this is not the card you want to see. This is a blank for Pokrovac. He does get decent follow-ups, but he, you know, doesn't get to play anything on turn six. But they drew it, who's about to stabilize. Wow. Not good. This swipe is going to be good. The problem is you don't develop anything. How do you feel? Well, never mind. You you yep. Do develop something. I totally you do mind. now. You do get something, and there's no answer to it. Now, even though Emperor won't actually, um, won't actually hit a lot of cards, the fact that it's going to be on the board and actually just reduce down even a Savage Roar is still pretty huge. Yeah, and the Zombie Chow choice from Pokrovac as well. Uh, you know, healing the Druid. Bites him back. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's really something that I think might matter a lot. Because even with those stacked minions in his hand, like Dr. Boom and the Dunga, the... And the Gang, but yeah, I mean, there's so, there's so much pressure. The issue is you've just healed up the Druid to the point where he might just and not be Because of the worried. mana, he could actually draw into BGH here, which would be huge. And doesn't look like he has it. Five damage to the face. And you could analysis. Savage War to trade if you want, but it feels a little so awful. To trade. Yeah. I think I this is the point when you actually start dealing damage to your opponent. Yeah, I was, I was wondering whether actually uh, like Wrath on one of the boom bots was worth to cycle because you're guaranteeing the Emperor tick. Um, but yeah, like either one's fine. The dinosaur sprint uh, spreads the uh, spreads the potential boom bot havoc around. Five damage to the face is basically four mana worth. Right. Yeah. So. I, oh I, yeah, I, I would never have attacked uh, with the Thoris in there. Uh, is in, into the Doctor Boom and try and clear. Yeah, because you lose no, 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 the, I mean, the, 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 the bomb or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You just, I think it just, it's very important to start racing against the suit, put him in an awkward position because we know that the zoo doesn't necessarily have means to raise through it well. Yeah. Right. Because of the combo, so this is definitely a good. good um, He's already seen a power of well. Yeah, one of them was played earlier on the Ancient of War, and the thing is, you're still forcing the Zoo player unless he's got a like a lethal right right there uh, oh. to slow down. Unfortunately, uh, maybe the Void Walker is okay. Actually, just puts up a little speed bump to stop something uh, something too crazy happening with the combo. So it, although it wasn't fantastic by any means, it wasn't a you know a completely terrible outcome. Yeah. So, a top deck swipe or a draw swipe? A Wrath even, you can cycle both to draw two cards, it's still very valuable. Uh, the Drake will draw a card, the Wrath will draw a card, Dr. Boom will go down. Uh, lots of flexibility there for Camel. So Azure Drake, first with Wrath, yeah? Think? Yeah, I, I think the potential the payoff of getting swipe is too big here, to not Azure Drake. Uh, even just a Wrath That's not bad. Solid, you can still you can pick still up cycle. that swipe. Yeah, yeah, you can still cycle. And the pickup is another ref! That's just insane. Now we can kill the Doom God and still draw a card. Yeah. And now. And you can still hear innovate. <laughs> innovate. <laughs> oh, Pokrovac's face. Innovate for Priceless. Hey, that's still good. <laughs> still good. He can, just hit, he can trade and hero power and remove the taunt now, and it's, uh, it's going to be all reliant on probably this boom bot and Pokrovac's. Uh, top decks, or the, the draw and then the tap potentially. See if you can slow this down because Force of Nature Savage draw for seven mana is definitely going to come into play here. But the thing is, there are no more big, like, you know, heavyweight minions in Bukhravag's deck. They're all gone. Either discarded or played. And that's yeah, game. Cam yeah, Cameron's going to just do a sigh there. We couldn't hear it, but we could definitely see it as he locks in this combo. Oh my god. Shakes his head at the camera. And he innovated out the Druid of the Claw. Druid of the Claw and yeah, Savage Raw. Yeah, he's like the claw ultimate damage for Cameron, but he wins without the need of playing the Druid of the Claw with Innovate and secures another top four finish for us here at Insomnia Championships. Well, I want to see more of that zoo. I want to see more of that zoo aggro. It didn't quite work out in this uh, in this series because of the fact that it got blown out by a typical got out zooed. zoo. But, <laughs> um, but Provac was like, yo, uh, dude, what the hell did you do to me? And Camel was like, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to. Yeah, that's what was so funny. Like, when uh, Camel's face when he was drawing the, right. uh, getting his, <laughs> you, his face was right. worse than Pokrovac's. He was like, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Like, um, I suppose I have to do this. And then just takes the game. So really good set though, taking it to 3-2. Yep, well, very well done. I mean, he didn't mean to win, but he ended up the winner. And he's oh, gonna go to top four. Uh, he's gonna go to top four <laughs> regardless. Definitely won the set. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, Druid things and uh, the opponent not drawing what he needs. That being said, uh, we'll be taking a short break before we move on to the next match for another top four finish. We'll be right back, guys. Stay tuned.